Hi there, and welcome to this video on A-level biology for the AQA specification, focusing on the topic of immunity, and in particular, on the human immunodeficiency virus. I'm Manisha from StudyMind, where we help you to revise A-level biology with our helpful video tutorials tailored to your subject, your specification, and to you. If you're new here, please make sure to click that subscribe button. And whilst you're watching, feel free to leave any comments down below of anything you're unsure about, and let us know if it's your first time watching so we can send you our free revision resources. We also have helpful timestamps to guide you through the specification. So, let's get started. Welcome to lesson six of six in this tutorial, covering the human immunodeficiency virus. This is the final video in our series of six lessons on the topic of immunity. In the last lesson, we looked at the types of immunity. Here is the AQA specification point for today's lesson. We'll be looking at the structure of HIV and its replication. Here's a quick case study of the influenza virus. This is the virus that causes us to catch the flu. Since it evolves very quickly, we have to develop new vaccines each year to fight off the different strains of the virus. When people don't vaccinate themselves, they can easily catch the flu virus and give it more opportunities to evolve and develop new strains which complicate the development of the influenza vaccine. Now let's look at HIV, which is the virus that can cause AIDS. First, we'll look at its structure before understanding how it causes damage. Researchers have identified the structure of HIV using experimental techniques such as mass spectrometry and atomic force microscopy. HIV is known as a retrovirus with a complex structure. The first part is the viral RNA genome made up of two copies of RNA. Then there is the nucleocapsid which surrounds the RNA and protects it. The next part is the capsid which is a larger protein coat that surrounds the nucleocapsid and gives added protection to the genome. We then have the matrix, which provides the overall structure. The lipid envelope acts as the outer protective coat of the HIV virus. HIV has two glycoproteins, which are viral attachment proteins that HIV uses to infect its target cell. Here is a summary of the structure of HIV. HIV replicates like other viruses. It needs to infect a host cell first in order to replicate, since it doesn't have the ribosomes, enzymes and other materials to replicate alone. HIV infects T helper cells as its primary host cell. The HIV attachment proteins bind to the CD4 receptor on the cell surface membrane of T helper cells. Upon entry, the HIV capsid uncoats and releases its contents, such as RNA and enzymes, into the cytoplasm. The RNA genome of HIV contains the RNA copies alongside the protective nucleocapsid. The other enzymes, such as reverse transcriptase and integrase, are also released. Reverse transcriptase uses viral RNA as a template to make the complementary DNA strand. Eventually, double-stranded DNA is produced from the RNA. The enzyme integrase makes a cut into the host DNA and integrates the viral DNA into the host. The viral DNA then hijacks the cell, forcing it to read the viral DNA to make viral mRNA. This viral mRNA hijacks the host cell's ribosomes and forces it to only make viral proteins. Without making its own proteins, the cell can't survive. The viral proteins assemble at the cell membrane to form new viral particles. They exit the cell through budding or exocytosis. 
a portion of the phospholipid bilayer is taken along with it to form the viral coat. Upon release, each new viral particle infects more T helper cells to replicate more HIV. The HIV attachment proteins bind to the CD4 receptor on the cell surface membrane of T helper cells. Upon entry into the T helper cells, the HIV capsid uncoats and releases its contents into the cytoplasm. Reverse transcriptase uses the viral RNA as a template to make a complementary DNA strand. The enzyme integrase makes a cut into the host DNA and integrates the viral DNA into the host. The host then makes the viral proteins, which means that the host cannot survive. Next, the viral proteins are released, and the viral particles go on to infect more T helper cells. This is a summary of HIV replication. Can you think of all the steps involved in replication of HIV? Now let's look at AIDS. This is a disorder in which the immune system of an individual begins to fail and cannot fight against pathogens. It's characterised by a low T helper cell count. HIV depletes the T helper cell, which causes AIDS. T helper cells are a crucial component of the human immune system. Antigen presenting cells need the T helper cells to activate the adaptive immune response. Without T helper cells, neither the cytotoxic T cells or the B cells can become activated. Without the T helper cells, the immune cells will die. In the absence of activation signals, both the T cytotoxic T cells and B cells undergo energy and eventually die. This means that the overall immune system will fail, leaving the individual susceptible to infections such as the common cold. The average time between HIV infection and the development of AIDS is 10 years, but this can vary. HIV is a sexually transmitted infection, or STI. It can pass from one individual to another through semen, vaginal fluid, the capsid, breast milk, and blood, and glycoproteins. HIV can be avoided through safe and protected sex, avoiding blood contact, since HIV transmission needs fluid contact. It's nearly impossible to get HIV from sharing a meal or a drink, or from normal physical contact such as hand-holding or hugging. Like the influenza virus, the treatment of HIV is complex and evolving. The rate of antigenetic drift is nowhere near the rate at which the influenza virus evolves. Antiviral drugs can treat HIV, such as the following. Receptor antagonists prevent the binding between the HIV attachment proteins and the target CD4. Fusion inhibitors prevent the outer lipid envelope fusing with the cell surface membrane. Reverse transcriptase inhibitors will prevent the HIV converting RNA into DNA, and the integrase inhibitors prevent the HIV from integrating its genome into the host genome. Finally, protease inhibitors prevent the assembly of the viral proteins into the new viral particles. HIV can often mutate and change, so a single treatment is usually ineffective. Most patients receive a cocktail mixture of drugs in order to achieve the greatest possible treatment. There is no cure for HIV, but it is treatable. The virus can be prevented from replicating. Therefore, what was once a lethal disease has now become a manageable lifestyle when paired with proper medical advice. A common misconception among many people is that viruses can be treated with antibiotics. 
since this targets bacteria, not viruses. Antibiotics work by targeting different bacterial structures, such as the cell wall. Since viruses do not have cell walls, they are untreatable with antibiotics. We've now covered the learning objective for today's lesson. If there's anything you feel unsure about, feel free to skip back through the video and re-watch it. We've now completed Lesson 6. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to subscribe by clicking down below and leaving a comment of a topic that you'd like to see a video on. Click here to watch the rest of our videos in our A-Level Biology series, or visit our website, studymind.co.uk, for past paper compilations by topic and specification.